I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And when the broken-hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. For though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, oh, let it be. There will be an answer, let it be. We'd like to welcome all of you here this afternoon to our third annual award ceremony of the Children of Abraham Peace Essay Contest. Here at Georgetown University, we believe that the educational enterprise is the process of coming to an ever deeper understanding and appreciation for the wonder, mystery, and beauty of creation. In the tradition of the Children of Abraham, I'd like to say shalom, salam, and peace be upon you everybody. It's wonderful to have you here with us at our third and Children of Abraham Peace Essay Contest. I'd like to extend my big thanks to Roberta Baskin for giving up her Sunday to be here with us. I'm sure she wouldn't be here if she didn't think that the work our students are doing are important. This year we had 18 outstanding essays, all on the area of corruption. And Ms. Baskin is here today to speak on the issue of corruption and present awards to our essayists. Thank you, Avade, and I'm, I'm uh, really happy to be here. And I have an ulterior motive, and that is I want to hear about these essays on corruption for future stories. That's how I get my ideas. And um, this essay contest is a, a celebration and an investment in the future. Um, and in future peace leaders that we have sitting here on stage. It's our next generation of wisdom keepers and peace leaders. And I am humbled and honored to share the stage with young people who are, who are preparing to make the world a better place. And Lord knows we need it. We've made a bit of a mess. And we've made your work very challenging. And what kind of world do you envision politically, socially, economically? As an investigative reporter for 30 years, I feel so old, my role is shining a bright light on corruption and injustice. And I, um, there's an expression that I love that Justice Louis Brandeis said, which is, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And the, the whole quote is that publicity is justly commended as a remedy for social and industrial diseases. Sunlight is said to be the best of disinfectants electric light, the most efficient policeman. And my vision of peace comes with economic justice. Um, I think that economic justice promotes social justice. And economic justice is a framework for peace. You can't have peace where there's a world where children go to bed hungry. You can't have peace where the environment is polluted. And Sweden, which is the birthplace of the Nobel Peace Prize, um, well, the Swedes have a very unique word that I've learned for business, and it's called narings live. And the literal translation of narings live is nourishment of life. That's how they look at business. Well, my specialty has been corporate misconduct and government corruption. Sometimes with the government, it's more like incompetence than corruption, but corporate misconduct and government corruption are like dance partners. They take steps together. and. My business has been doing a reality check on business, on big business. And what is it that business says? And more importantly, what I look at is what is it that business does? 
I think that we all have an obligation to discover what's wrong and not to tolerate it. We each have to stand up for justice anywhere. Shining light on problems isn't productive if it doesn't produce solutions. And your award-winning essays are visions of solutions, and that's what the world needs more of. It needs more solutions. And changing our world will take courage and hard work and the kind of creativity that you earned in this contest today. And because you have faith and values, because you believe in justice and tolerance and peace, you must show the world what peace looks like. You have the power to light up the world and inspire others. And I thank you for this opportunity to bask in the glow of your essays. It's been a great pleasure to read all of the essays this year and to watch how the concepts develop year after year after year. And without exception, you all did a really, really good job this year. So once again, I'd like to welcome everyone here and um, hope you enjoy the program. Thank you very much. When sitting down to write my essay, I thought, oh boy, seven pages. Even with the double space and the large font, it was still a lot to write. After beginning my essay, however, I realized that it wasn't not having enough space. It was having enough room for all my words. I struggled in every sentence to do every religious justice. Through the compassion of Jesus, the kindness of Muhammad, and the strength of Moses, I found that the beauty of the three face and the lessons learned cannot, learned cannot be measured by the Microsoft word count. These are words on a piece of paper. Now, that doesn't translate directly into action. So, you know, as we leave today, I think it's each and every one of our duties to go back and look at what we can do, because we can do something. Thanks. When I first started off this essay, I didn't know much about the three phase. But as I learned more and more about it, uh, just as uh, Father Timothy said, they're all the same. And I learned that you can't put a label on Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, because they all believe in the same purpose. There's one God, and you want to have the better purpose for the world and make everything good. Thank you. Muhammad وسلم, ended corruptions through patience, Jesus through wisdom, and Moses through his bravery. As I was doing research for this essay, I realized that we are living in a world that is being ravaged by war. This war is a universal one. Now, we, our generation, has the capabilities of ending this war. We want to live in a world where people can live side by side in peace. This contest was a great opportunity to teach kids about similar, how similar different religions really are and that the three great prophets set an example for us by using nonviolence to demonstrate their point. I got a lot out of this contest, and what I learned about the connections of nonviolence and religion is very rewarding. Ladies and gentlemen, from this whole essay contest, I would say that there's only one message, one all-encompassing lesson that I was able to learn from writing about seven pages about all three of the Abrahamic faiths, and that is, if there is any one problem in the whole world, any problem. The one thing that you must always remember is that the solution to that one problem always lies within ourselves. Thank you. Most importantly, I learned to embrace and live the theme of my essay, which was speaking truth to power. And now, after so much hard work and research, the end result is really gratifying. Thank you. I learned that to spread peace and have a more peaceful world, it takes that one leader to spread it. And uh, with the help of my mentor, Mr. David Weeks, I feel that I'm one step closer to becoming that leader to change the world. What I've learned from this experience is that the peacemakers of the world, great leaders like Jesus, Moses, and Muhammad, are the people who stand up against injustice of the world that surrounds them instead of accepting the corruption. The world is inherently unequal. It is our job as peacemakers to do as great leaders before us have done and to try to level the playing field. Ignorance. Not only the focus of my essay, called The Jihad of Love, but a flaming motif of my journey. The most remarkable difference I have to speak on behalf of would be the ignorance that I once, ha I once had on this subject and the knowledge and understanding of these faiths that now fill such a space. All of the prophets of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, lived among everyday people to show that moral conduct means finding the courage to change can't to can and won't to will. This essay taught me that there is no substitute for high moral values and conduct which each of the messengers embodies, and there is no better organization to support than Flock. So I am donating my award to Flock in their new campaign 
for migrant workers in the tobacco fields. If knowledge is essential in counteracting modern religious stereotypes, then this essay has helped me gain perspective important for an open-minded existence in today's society. For me, during this essay contest, I learned that education is the journey you take in the classroom and not the grade you get on your next test. Corruption is something that stems from creating the illusion that others are different from us and that their differences justify living to benefit ourselves at the expense of others. And I believe the prophets fought to deal with this within the individual, the community, and at the level of society. And we must strive to do the same today. Moses, Muhammad, and Jesus, and them's, their opinions and believing in them honestly made them the people who they became and the things that they accomplished. When the judges read their essays, I, I had heard wonderful comments from each of the judges, each saying that they were inspired by what they had read and uh, they wanted to commend uh, all of our uh, participants. My name is Priya Agawal Harding and I'm a senior at Glenelg Country School. I worked at a children's shelter in Delhi in 2006 and 2007 and through the generous leadership grant given to me by the Fund for the Future of Our Children, I will be able to return to Prayas in the summer to help start a new project, giving second chances to adolescent girls for a better future. Child trafficking is a violation of human rights. Approximately 1.2 million children are trafficked globally every year by those who want to exploit and abuse them for work and for sex. When I first came across the statistics on child trafficking, I was horrified. I didn't know that much about child trafficking then, and the harsh reality of this cruel practice prompted me to spend some time with Prayas and learn more about this issue and its magnitude. There's a charity called St. Vincent de Paul, which ministers to the poor and homeless here in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Their motto, Faith Works Wonders, seems to mirror the intent of the microgrant program. I am great, very grateful for the faith of you, the donors and advisors of the Fund for the Future of the Children. It has been your faith, in addition to seed monies, that inspire youth such as myself to take our ideas about making the world a better place and do something. I am especially grateful for the leap of faith that Avide and the Fund for the Future of the T Children took in my vision to turn my essay into a film linking the story of my grandfather and the prospects for peace and reunification of North and South Korea. As you all know, the issue of Korean unific reunification is one that keeps arising in world news, day after day, month after month, year after year. The news goes from hopeful to threatening and back again. From the New York Phil Philharmonic's trip to Pyongyang to North Korean backed nuclear reactors in Syria. So together, with your faith and support, I will finalize this journey, this journey story of the impact of a forgotten war on one man's life and the prospects for peace in my and your lifetime. Earth Girl. With the microgrant, uh, I would be able to bring her to life. I, I would go around as Earth Girl to local elementary schools and talk to them about, about environmental stewardship. I think it's important for kids at that age to know about being eco-friendly because they're the ones who are going to shape our futures. They're the youth of tomorrow and if we start this mindset of being respectful to our planet, it's going to be deeply ingrained in them and it's going to benefit our planet in the future. The project that I'm focusing on is uh, a benefit concert in part with School Girls Unite, a nonprofit organization that seeks to prioritize global girls' education by raising funds to educate the underprivileged girls and spreading awareness within their communities about the lack of education worldwide. School Girls Unite has direct contacts with um, girls in Mali, and I could read you statistics about uh, the lack of education in Africa, in Mali, um, but a lot of progress has made. Over 70 students have been sponsored, and uh, the project that we were working on, a benefit concert, would be a great way to raise funds for these girls who were in dire need of an education. So we're going to 
to start, and I'd like to ask uh, uh, Roberta Baskin to join me in giving you the award. Mar Buhisi, honorable mention. Second honorable mention is Diana Zhang. The next honorable mention goes to Ali Buhisi. Honorable mention goes to Amanda Tedstone. Sarah Sprague, honorable mention. Rachel Mulberry, honorable mention. The next honorable mention goes to Tamara Abdel Salam. Honorable mention to Jonathan Keston. Honorable mention to Devika Jaipuriyar. Fourth prize of $500 goes to Melissa Bergner. Melissa won our second prize last year. Another fourth place, Gemma Dustachio. That's a $500 reward. Fourth place award to Larissa Franklin. Third place goes to Aniruda Plala Subramanian. Second prize goes to Christoph Franacek. And the first prize goes to Lauren Sumida. Lauren was a fourth prize winner last year. My name is Lansing Freeman. Um, last year I was uh, awarded by Avi Day and the FFC uh, an award for peace advocacy as a teacher. And today it is my honor and privilege to start the coronation process um, for the teacher who's going to receive the award this year, and her name is uh, June Murray. June led student trips to the Peruvian Amazon, where her students delivered school and medical supplies to rural villages, designed curriculum with Cultural Survival, a nonprofit whose objective is to promote the voices of the indigenous communities of the world, and is serving her second term as president of the Hudson Education Association. I'm honored by this acknowledgement and so pleased that I get to share this with my students. Um, building relationships is the most important work we do as humans. Relationships allow us to reach beyond our own immediate experiences and understandings. And at the same time, relationships will requ require us to become more familiar with ourselves, developing our capacities for empathy and compassion. Thank you so much. Yeah, it has been an honor. Thank you very much. So let's just take a moment to realize we're in presence of the one who has called us into life, the one who has breathed life into each of us and continues to sustain us with that breath of life. Good and gracious God, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not count the cost, to fight and not heed the wounds, to toil and not seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for re reward, except to know that I am doing your will. Amen. May we see the day when violence and bloodshed cease, when a great peace will embrace the whole world. The nation shall not threaten nation, and humankind will not again know war. For all who live on earth shall realize we have not come into being to hate or to destroy. We have come into being to praise, to labor, and to love. Compassionate God, bless the people of all nations with the power of compassion. Fulfill the promise conveyed in your scripture. Let love and justice flow down like a mighty stream I will bring peace to the land, and you shall lie down, and no one shall terrify you. Let peace fill the earth as waters fill the sea. This we pray, O God, now in our time, and let us say, Amen. O you who have attained to faith, be ever steadfast in your devotion to God, bearing witness to the truth in all equity, and never let hatred, hatred of anyone, lead you into the sin of deviating from justice. Be just. This is closest to being God conscious and remain conscious of God verily. God is aware of all that you do.